vinyl community. So, hope everything's going well. Friday for everybody. And, uh, hope you're, you survive the week. Um, just a real quick vinyl hunt, uh, mail bag update. Uh, have been running around doing a bunch of stuff here, so I'm a little, a little tired, a little, <laughs> had a busy day. Anyway, um, what I'm not playing right now is something that's a tad too loud. But that's okay. So um, actually, Peter Murphy's first solo album, Glory, I've always loved this title, um, Should the World Fail to Fall Apart. That's great. Um, so it's, it's a nice uh, Beggar's Banquet label, UK, great artwork on the inside. Uh, if you're a fan of Bauhaus, you know him from that. Um, I like Bauhaus very much. This is not a Bauhaus album, <laughs> I don't think. I mean, it is sort of, you know, it has his, you know, it's his voice. Um, but it's a very different sound. And, and it's a, I really like this album and happy to have it on vinyl. So um, that was something I picked up today. Um, what I did, I also found it's it's a little companion CD single for Final Solution. Nice artwork, a little close up of his face. I was like, the UK albums and singles always look so much nicer. Not always, usually. But um, anyway, so those are two good pickups. I'm going to try to make this quick. I would say that ends up being 30 minutes, so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, so this is, like I said, going to be a mixture of some things that I picked up recently, some things that I've gotten in the mail. <clears throat> um, let's, uh, well, have a look several 80s things, but this is one. And maybe uh, there's a Frank Zappa live. I don't even remember this coming out back in the 80s, but uh, 1980 Frank FZ, 1984 tour. Big Mother is watching you. The PMRC warning label here. Um, so I was happy to pick this up. I never, I, I recognize it, but I don't remember owning it. I, I just must have not bought it at the time. I had a number of Frank Zappa releases. Um, this is on MOI Records, Mothers of Invention Records, kind of a dark pink label. When I looked this up on um, YouTube just to check it out, not YouTube, but uh, eBay just to check it out, um, all I could find were Barking Pumpkin labels. So I'm just assuming this is an earlier pressing of it, um, and it's official. As I started, I looked at this label and I went, mm, it's not discreet and it's not Barking Pumpkin. I don't know. What is it? So, MOI Records, if there's a Frank Zappa fanatic out there, please, or anybody that knows anything about this particular recording. I really like Frank Zappa's live albums. I have the whole series of, um, you can't do that on stage anymore on CD. <clears throat> uh, Broadway the Hard Way is one of my favorite live albums of all time. It's just a great live album. Um, I believe that's a live album. Yeah. So, um, anyway, if anybody has any info about this, specifically, it's just a bottle of Perrier, but, uh, especially the label here, label variation, MOI, Mothers of Invention, I'm assuming, versus um, Parking Pumpkins, anybody can uh, illuminate me into that, I would appreciate it. So, um, Guillotine, 10-inch record, it's a sampler from Virgin Records. All right, nice, nice vinyl scratch pop there. Oh well, that happens. One of the uh, one of the things we love about vinyl. So Virgin Records is a 10-inch sampler from the 80s, and I owned this way back when, and I owned it because it had a song on it by XTC that you couldn't get anywhere else that I knew of at the time, and that song was Tra Traffic Light Rock. And when they reissued the CDs of XCC's catalog, uh, they included Traffic Light Rock 
on the first album, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was, as an extra track. So I have a feeling that's why this one left my collection back in the Great Vinyl Purge. But it's got um, four acts on the uh, artists on uh, each side the motors penetration the table avant gardener was like the name of that band xtc rocky erickson poet in the roots and x-ray specs so um also my when i had this way back in the 80s didn't have a poster but this one's got a poster with it so um i won't unfold all of it but you know, it just basically has all the, you know, the motel, the motors, traffic light rock, XTC, guillotine, and other additional photos. Some photos that I can't show on YouTube, probably. So that's how interesting it is. If you can find this, and it's not too hard to find this, pick it up. It's a great 10-inch uh, compilation from the 80s on Virgin. So, let's see. A um, couple things. Uh, let's actually let me do this at first. Came in the mail. Uh, BG's Odessa. I have the CD set of this that came out with the soft cover, but um, I always wanted the vinyl and it was always you know, 50, 60 bucks. Found this online for 24. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good price and I wanted to nab it while it was still around and still available at that price. So happy to get that. I haven't even opened it up yet, but I will, I will be doing that and giving it a good listen. Um, I've been watching a number of uh, YouTube posts out there, Lazarus, I'm blaming you for the next couple of things I'm about to talk about. Uh, one is you're showing off all your Anthony Phillips, so I've been sort of renewing my Anthony Phillips collection, and uh, you were going on about how good Sides was, and I've never heard it, and I've always been curious about it, so I found a copy and nabbed it. Haven't heard it yet, but I'm looking forward to uh, hearing it um, very soon. But it's been a busy week, I haven't had a chance to do a lot of just relaxed listening that I could enjoy, you know. Um, whoa. And these are two things I told myself I wasn't going to buy. And um, it was the, most, the two most recent Peter Gabriel albums, just because uh, it was just very, when I heard this, I, it was just, I, I liked the idea of him doing a covers album, but all the songs sounded so depressing, slow and droning and just, well, I didn't give it a very fair listen, I don't think, because I heard it. <laughs> Excuse me, I heard it at a friend's house, a little bit more of it, and um, I've heard, listened to some more of it online and decided, yeah, I should probably get this because I'll probably want it. But as you can see, I didn't get what uh, originally was released. I ended up getting the, um, uh, the the most recent version of it, which has a different co cover, an alternate cover, and it's uh, from Classic Records and Colored Vinyl. It's on a nice deep red colored vinyl. Again, haven't opened it yet. I just haven't had a chance to, but glad to have this in my possession before it's uh, out of print. And something like this, limited edition, color vinyl, Gabriel, it's going to be out of print. And the alternate cover is pretty cool. I like the original cover better. Kind of. But I like this cover as well. Very interesting. So, the back is just black. Uh, yes, I wish I had it open so I could show you the uh, color vinyl, but I'll do that at another time. I'll do a color vinyl post. Uh, That'll, that'll be fun. Find all my colored vinyl. Um, and the other one that I got, which I just didn't like the idea of it when I, again, when I flashed on a couple of the tracks, I didn't care for it online. But and then I listened to, uh, uh, was watching uh, a post by Lazarus, and um, and uh, I heard it in the background, and I it was great. I just I thought, wow. Okay, orchestration. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this. That sounds really good. So, um, and then when he displayed it and showed uh, how the deluxe packaging that was in it, including the 7 inch, um, I had to go get it. So, again, before it disappeared, and it probably will disappear, um, I dabbed myself a copy. Plus, yeah, great artwork. And the artwork for the whole series, there's, um, there's like a, a book, uh, it's almost like a 10 or 11 by 11 inch maybe a 10 inch by 10 inch cloth bound book. It's about eh, so thick, but it includes several deluxe CDs, maybe a DVD in it. But it also has another alternate cover um, with all these little microbes or cells. Um, that's very, very colorful. 
Uh, and so every single little addition of this seems to have something special in it, um, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, glad I grabbed that. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Um, ah, injure my arm while I'm pulling these out. Um, grabbed a handful of jazz uh, from last week to this week. This one came in the mail. I just got it for a few bucks on eBay. Um, Gabor Jabot Spellbinder. Um, the vinyl's in very good condition. It's not great, but it's not horrible. Um, an Impulse, an original monor, monoral. It'll be mono for the rest of us, but monoral. Great cover artwork um, on the original Impulse label. So happy to have that. I uh, increased my ECM library a little bit. When I was at uh, Silver Platters, one of the uh, people there who work there was, uh, I was talking with him about uh, Pat Matheny and Keith Jarrett, ECM, and he started pointing out this one, Keith Jarrett's. Well, I got the uh, KPLU version of it. I don't know what it was doing there, KPLU. I didn't, you know, it was just there and it was for sale, so I nabbed it. It's also a, a nice wide label promo of it. It's in perfect condition. Thank you for taking care of it, KPLU. But this is a uh, Survivor's Suite, Keith Jarrett. Again, haven't heard this. Um, sure, I'll enjoy it. I just haven't, haven't had time to look. Pat Metheny Watercolors. And another Pat Metheny on ECM. This is the Pat Metheny Group. By Mays, Mark Egan, and Dan Gottlieb. So, again, I haven't had a chance to give these a good, serious listen, so I'll be doing that soon. And this is one, uh, Pat Metheny, with Christian McBride and Antonio Sanchez, uh, Day Trip and Tokyo Day Trip Live. It's the vinyl and the CDs of all the music together as one big package. I had seen this when it came out, I think a couple of years ago, it was 2009? Yeah, 2009. And totally forgot about it. And I was interested in it, I'd heard the songs, and then it just escaped me. I don't know. But then I was sort of fumbling around online looking at things, when I think when I was looking up Pat Metheny again. Um, and this popped up and I immediately remembered, oh, I never got that, yay. So I tracked down a good copy of it uh, at a good price and uh, picked it up against the seal. I haven't had a chance to listen to it, but looking forward to giving it a listen. Um, let's see. A couple more things here. Picked up a few more 12-inch singles uh, to add to my growing collection. I'm becoming quite the the uh, library of 12-inch singles. Um, if somebody has a large library of 12-inch singles, especially from the 80s, do a post. I'd love to see them. Um, Depeche Mode, Leave in Silence. And um, I'll do a separate post for Dr. Deadwax, but a number of these 12-inchers, uh, CD, or CD singles, I did that the last time I made this post. <laughs> uh, uh, 12-inch singles, vinyl singles. Um, they have a lot of... Uh, Dead Wax information, just strange. Like the Peter Murphy was one says something about it's it's the bee that makes the honey, with the bee being just the letter B. I think that's what it said. I'm gonna go through and write it down and do a separate post on Dead Wax, because I've got some others here that have some Dead Wax information on it. But anyway, um 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 Yeah. Nice textured cover. Nice British pressing. Very happy to have it. And I've also got uh, Two Simple Minds, Love Song. This is a great period for Simple Minds. I really like this period of their work. Love Song and This Earth That You Walk Upon. I always like the, the artwork for this and for the records around that time. Um, Sister Feelings Call and uh, I can't remember the other. There was an EP and an album and they ended up putting them together on uh, when they released it on CD. And the other Simple Minds was Waterfront. So nice to have that. There's a live track on the B side. So slowly getting a nice collection of 12 inch singles here from the 80s. And last but not least, um, Rolling Stones. I've seen this Rolling Stone cover before, Stone Age. But this was nice, it was Japanese pressing. And I got it for a pretty good price, even knocked off a few dollars because I had a coupon. So, um, yeah, it's, it's um, several of the earlier covers, and then it's got his tears go by, um, one more try, 
It was written by Jagger Richards. Uh, and then uh, Paint It Black, The Last Time, Blue Turns to Gray, and then the rest are our covers. So. Nice, it even includes a little insert, which is hiding. It's actually a smaller insert than they usually have on the Japanese pressings, but... That would make sense. All the lyrics in English, and then information in Japanese about the album and the cover. So, um, yeah. I was real happy to get this. There are a few other things I had in my hands. Again, I, you know, like we all do, we have things in our hands and then we put them back and we find other things and sort of weigh the decisions about mm, this versus that. <coughs> so, I was happy to grab this. Um, that's it for recent items. Um, I'm, 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 I might have put a few things away. I've been organizing and reorganizing things. Uh, before I do, I was going to do a Beatles post, but I want to sort of show in rep sort of overall how many Beatles albums I have versus the rest of my collection. <laughs> but I want to get all my Beatles stuff organized correctly first. So, you know, maybe maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday afternoon, um, maybe next weekend. All depends. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, just catching up on a lot of stuff, watching a lot of clips, as many as I can. I uh, really enjoy it. Uh, keep them coming. Uh, I, just, I just really like watching the clips that people are putting up now and have been putting up. I found, I've been finding some older clips where people have showed their music rooms. And it's, you know, I'm kind of drooling because where I live is my music room. Um, I'm living in a small uh, co op. It's a one bedroom co op. So my living room is my music room. I would love to have a house where I could have like one or two music rooms, you know, storage, and then one that would just be for listening to music. Uh, a friend of mine down in Renton, he took half of his basement and he refinished it and turned it into a home theater. It literally looks like a theater when you go into it. And he has all of his audiophile equipment there, the speakers, everything. He's got everything built in so that it just hides away. Um, and it's great. He doesn't have a turntable. He's got some vinyl left that he's kept for sentimental reasons um, that he really wants to keep. I don't know if he has a turntable or not anymore, but I tell you, when you go there and you listen to music, watch a movie, it's just phenomenal. So it's great to have a separate space dedicated just to music. You know, I live in the same room that I have all my music, so believe me, you don't want to see what's below here, wherever here is, because <laughs> it's a mess. Because there's a, there's a desk here, obviously, for my computer, for my iMac, and there's a desk here that I was going to get rid of. It was my old desk. And then it sort of became my staging desk for when I get vinyl and I want to clean it up and put new sleeves on the 45s and, and you know, swap things out and all that. So uh, it really wouldn't, you're really not going to gain a lot from seeing much more of what I've already got to show you. It's really kind of a mess. That's another project this weekend. Well, I'm in the middle of my weekend, so. Anyway. Uh, enough of my yakking. Um, I'll keep watching. Maybe I'll do, I'll do another post tomorrow or something. If I get my Beatles set up, I'll do that. I'd like to grab some 45s and go through some 45s. Um, so there. Anyway, uh, goodbye, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.